Hi, this is Gail with Bernina of Naperville, and it's a late one. And I certainly hope that I captured everything you need for this month's vintage boardwalk. Woo! Can you believe after you watch this video, there are only two more left? We get to quilt and we get to do some embellishments, but this month is what we're focusing on. So we're gonna make two bicycles. The first bicycle, easy. It's in the hoop, one hooping. I'm gonna show you a little hack to get it to fit in the midi hoop. If you don't wanna do the hack, you can certainly do it in a mega, maxi, or jumbo hoop. All right, so keep that in mind. Then we're gonna make a second bicycle, the tandem bicycle, and that one is gonna be made as a two hooper for those of you who may not have the um, access to a larger hoop. So the one thing that I am gonna make sure I tell you right now, when you do that second bike or that second bike and you decide to do a two hooper, I might recommend a little fusible woven on the back of your background fabric. There's just the basket on the bike just seems a little bit dense. Now I got it to look great, but you know what? You're gonna see a little bit of how I got to make it look good and I had to work for it a little bit. So we're gonna do that. And then if you've never made half square triangles before, we're gonna do a traditional way which is like the Kimber Bell method that they use in their pattern. So we're gonna do that, but I wanted to introduce you to a product that I use a lot. I've used triangles on a roll for many years now, and I like it because I can just stitch, 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 cut, 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 and then everything is all perfect at the end, and I don't have to do all of that squaring up of the triangles at the end. So let's uh, go ahead and see what all we need to cover, in addition to the fact that you're gonna be cutting all of your filler blocks. And yeah, you have homework. I spelled it out for you in the handout. And don't forget that you can find the handout in the description of this video. So what are we waiting for? Let's do it. So easy, easy. We've got our first bicycle. Now this bicycle, there's nothing really that special with it. We're gonna do it all in one hoop on our Bernina 880. However, we do have to add a little vinyl beach ball there, but if you do not have a machine that can accommodate a five by seven size embroidery, there are instructions on the CD in your vintage boardwalk pattern to make this one a two hooper as well. But just because I don't wanna leave you hanging, if you have a smaller hoop, there's another bicycle in here, the tandem bike. It's here on page 24. So I actually am going to do this as a two hooper just so that you can see that process. For our bicycles, this is gonna be my combination that I picked these pennants and a little red piece for the basket. So this is the tandem bike. We're gonna do this in two hooping. So I'm gonna put this aside. So the first one that I'm gonna do is our regular bike that has a little beach ball with the vinyl. And so I am just gonna spray this and center this in my hoop and uh, stitch it out. So we're starting out with our embroidery with this bicycle and it's the six by 10 inch bicycle all in one hoop. Now, I wanna be using the midi hoop for this and I wanna teach you a little, you know, for lack of a better word, let's just call it a hack. And I'm gonna to go to the midi hoop and you can see here on this design that there's like this rectangle, but the bicycle kind of fits in there. So now I'm gonna use a new feature. So I'm using my Bernina 880 Plus, which also the 790 Plus and the 770 Plus and the updated 770 to Plus have this feature. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna use this button right here. It's under the I button. You might have to scroll to get there, but you're gonna hit this and then you're gonna break that design apart by hitting that little minus button. And then, do you see in our different colorways? I'm gonna get rid of that line, I don't want it, so I'm gonna to go to my little eye and my breadcrumbs up there, and I'm gonna hit delete. Then I'm gonna get rid of that square, and I'm gonna to touch that, and then I'm gonna delete that one. So now look, our design fits in the hoop, and I'm ready to stitch it out. To get started, I am gonna make sure that I have my basting function engaged, and then that's gonna help sew my design into my hoop, or sew my fabric onto my hoop, rather.
Okay, and now we're gonna move through all of the sequencing on this bicycle until the embroidery is complete. I want to show you another little trick. I'm ready to stitch the final color on the bicycle and sometimes I find that this is just the best practice on my 880 when I start a new color. Before I press the button to go to the next color I hit the needle down button and then I pull my bottom thread up just a little bit and this is helpful because that way my machine is going to cut both threads when it gets started, but it's just a way for me to keep everything nice and tidy. Now, there is one cute little bicycle that you might see me riding around downtown Naperville on in my dreams. So that was an easy one hooper. Let's go see what we need to do to make it a two hooper. Alrighty, so I want to talk to you about what happens when you make an oop. And I actually made an oop on my bicycle, my cute bicycle that I'm going to be so excited to ride around on virtually in my mind in downtown Naperville. But what I didn't do, because I got so excited to show you that technique where we could take out the basting lines and everything, is I forgot that we actually weren't centering this in the hoop, but we were actually supposed to lower it so that the bicycle is down, almost touching the seam allowance, so it looks like it's riding on the sand. So I'm gonna show you how to do that on the second bike. However, if you made yours like this in the hoop, I don't want you to dare take this apart. You could actually go ahead and sew a little piece of your extra fabric to the bottom of this in order to make it look right, which is what I'm gonna do. Or you could just leave it in the middle and nobody's gonna know, okay? But um, I am going to, before I do the second bike, I'm actually gonna show you how to just put a little piece of fabric down here and nobody's ever gonna know any different. I cut a little piece. This is about two and three quarters or three inches by the width of this, which is 10 and a half. And all I'm going to do is line up my little piece like this, line that just up below the tires and stitch a quarter of an inch away from this piece and then press it over and then trim up to make sure that my end result is eight and a half by 10 and a half inches. So after a little trip to the machine, you can see where I stitched this down and then flipped it over. And now if I wanted, I could just trim off that extra fabric right there. All better. All right, so now to prevent that little oopsie, what I've drawn on here is the cutting line and the line where I want my little wheels to go. Plus, I drew a line down the center of the material. So I'm lining this up so that that drawn center line is on like the third grid line over, just like that. And I'm also making sure that one of my lines down here is totally straight on top of my drawn line. So this is the way that I wanna hoop this up. So I've got my hoop here. You can see that I have one of those little springs in my hoop so that it can kind of stay open to help me hoop easier. And now I'm just gonna squeeze this into the hoop. Okay. So now this is ready to go on the machine and I'm gonna stitch the seat end of the bicycle first and I've rotated it 90 degrees clockwise. All right, so I'm gonna pick the first design, which is the seat, it's got the box around it, just like that. Then I'm gonna to go to my I button and I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees, just like that, because this is the way that the bicycle is gonna be the way that I've hooped it. Then I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna use my pinpoint placement to find my center. And then make sure that my needle is in the center of the design and the center of the hoop. I could also use the butterfly here and just touch the edge of this pink to just make sure that it's within my hoop and everything is happy and so forth. And then if you look really closely, I don't know if you can see them here, 
but there's like a little notch right there. That is also gonna be important. That's gonna stitch out. And that is where next time when we do our second hooping, we're really gonna play with our pinpoint placement. But for now, I'm all set to stitch this out. So I'm gonna say set, I'm gonna close this, and then I'm gonna go to my stitching screen and then direct my attention down to my hoop. And of course, I'm gonna start by removing my template. And then this is just a basting stitch, so I'm gonna just stitch this out. And I'm gonna bring up my bobbin thread like I did the last time. There we go, pull that long thread here. And now let's just give it a stitch. And now I'm already set to do just a little basting stitch around the bicycle like this. All right, now the first thing to stitch out is gonna be the wheel. So I'm gonna use my dark black color, thread that up, and I'm just gonna go through all of the steps and I'll bring you back here when there's something important. Now, I do wanna comment that we are doing the tandem bicycle in the two hoop configuration. There's a bicycle with a plastic beach ball. That's the one that we did in one hooping. And then there's this bicycle that has like a little basket that we're gonna add. And this is the one I'm choosing to do in two hoopings to show you just in case you don't have a larger hoop for your machine. It's getting ready to stitch out the um, placement stitch for the basket. And I'll show you what to do to the basket as soon as we get this line in place. Right. All we're going to do is after we get this in place, we're going to fold our little basket piece in half and we're going to line the folded edge of our piece at the top of the basket just like that and then we're going to stitch this down. And then we're gonna trim it and we're gonna do the cover stitching on it, which is a little red satin stitch with this red thread. The final color on this, it's gonna be actually stitching reference points that we're gonna use for pinpoint placement when we do our next hooping, which is gonna be the front of the bicycle, the handlebars. So we're just gonna let it do this thing All right, it's time for the next hooping. Okay, so I've got my hoop again. I'm gonna place my template in here. And what I'm going for here is just like I overlapped a little on the last one, I wanna kinda move this over just a few stitches just to make sure everything's in the hoop as I line it up. And now I'm gonna hold this and squeeze it into the hoop. Okay, very nice, very nice. 
So I'm going to pick the other design, which is going to be the front of the bike. And I want to rotate it 90 degrees. Again, there we go. Now I'm going to go into pinpoint placement. I'm removing my placement template. And I want to use, make sure that the butterfly is highlighted. And I want to touch just the corner of one of those little markers. And it's hard to maybe see it here. But there's one of those little placement markers just there. So now I want to move my needle to go just there. So I'm going to help by lowering my presser foot and using my knobs. I'm going to get the design right into position. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead. And say set. And now I'm gonna touch the other registration marker, which is right down there. And if you need to, you can zoom in to make sure the marker is just in place where it needs to be, and it is. So now I'm gonna move my needle to this one. And it's a little bit off, so I just need to move it over just a little bit. All right, and now I'm going to hit set on here and close and get, and then I want to just touch the seat of this bicycle just so I can make sure that it is going to stitch just in the spot I need it to start in and you know what I really have no reason to think that's not going to happen all right I think everything looks pretty good so I'm ready to stitch I'm going to skip color number one because we have pinpoint placement and so now we're going to start stitching the tire and I'm just going to go through all of the cycle until the bike is done I want to talk a little bit about this basket and the life preserver. For whatever reason, these designs or this stitching right here is really dense. So with that in mind, please use a little bit more stabilizer. You could even interface this um, background material with some SF-101 for this particular bike. Now, I don't know if it's this file for the two hooper because when I made this quilt the first time, I did the bike as a one hoop design. So I don't know if this file is just a little bit more dense or what, but I highly recommend that you double up on the stabilizer for the bicycle because what happened is I had to change this after the fact, but everything here is so dense that it actually tore the stabilizer away. And so I just wanna make sure that you don't have that experience here. So just double up on the stabilizer on this whole bicycle. All right, but we fixed our little indiscretion and now we're ready to move on to our duck beak. So I'm gonna continue with stitching out my little guy. I just want this to be a little bit of a testament to our Laura Star iron here. This was really puckery and um, you saw it in the hoop and it had some issues, but I was able to really get it flat and press it out and everything seems to be pretty good. So I'm just gonna trim out some threads back here and, uh, and then this guy is ready to be trimmed down and go in the quilt. We're also going to work on our pinwheels. And I'm gonna show you two techniques to make the pinwheels. The technique that's in the Vintage Boardwalk book, but also a technique using triangles on a roll. Triangles on a roll are one of my favorite ways to make half square triangles because there's not a lot of trimming at the end and uh, they come out pretty perfect every time. Method one of making your half square triangles is pretty easy. You're gonna take like your red piece 
and you're gonna just draw a line corner to corner, just like that on, on all of your pieces. So you're gonna have six of these to draw lines on. Then we're going to layer them right sides together and right sides together. Now I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine and stitch these together. Now this is the Kimberbell method where you cut the squares a little bit larger than you need. You do this method of stitching. Um, and yeah, let's go have a look at that. So now that we're at the sewing machine, I am using a number 97 D foot with the quarter inch right here. Now, I wanna point out something about this 97 D. This method is going to have me using the guide, but it needs to be a quarter of an inch from our drawn line like this. So what I don't want to do is use this side because this side is a little bit wider. So when I line this up, I'm going to line that quarter inch side of the foot along the line here. So now I'm just going to stitch. And now you can chain piece these together. See how I've got my other piece here? And now that's one side. Now we wanna turn this around. I'm gonna go ahead and just lift my needle out of there. And now I'm gonna start on the other side. And now cut. So now we're going to take this and we're going to cut on that drawn line and then we're going to press to the red side. So now that I have these little pieces, I'm just going to press them to the red side and these are going to be a little bit bigger than we need. So we're going to square up. That's what it's called when you trim up a half square triangle. So we're going to square up these to measure three inches. So as we square these up, I recommend that you get a ruler that has a diagonal 45 degree angle on it like this. And then you're gonna line this up. You're gonna line this up and get it as close to the edge as you possibly can. And see here is my three inch mark. We wanna trim these up to be three inches. So I'm gonna leave about an eighth of an inch hanging past that seam allowance so I can get a nice square edge on my triangle like that. Then once I get that square edge, I can turn it around and square up the piece to be exactly three inches. Like that. And so you're gonna do that with all of your pieces if you choose the Kimber Bell method. But I've got another method and that is using these triangles on a roll. Now, triangles on a roll come on a roll, hence why they're called triangles on a roll, but it's this diagram printed on paper that has a stitching line, which is the dotted line, and a cutting line, which is the solid line. So I want you to notice how I've cut this out. So this was another piece, but I left a little bit hanging off here and a little bit hanging off there. But this is my piece and this is gonna make me the 12 triangles that I need. So I've cut some pieces here and these are right sides together. And I've cut them so that I can lay down my piece here and I'm gonna stitch on those dotted lines. Um, if you want, you could spray the back of this paper 
with some 505. So working with this, I am going to go to my stitch length and I'm gonna make it just a little bit closer together, just like we would with paper piecing. So I'm gonna do it at about 1.85 millimeters long, and that way it'll be easier to tear the paper because ultimately the paper is gonna get torn off of this. But let's have a look here. So I'm gonna start just on one of these paths. It's an, always a good idea to kind of follow the direction of the arrows and that way you can be reminded which way that you need to sew. So I'm just gonna sew right on top. Of that dotted line. And then I'm gonna sew just here to get to the next dotted line. And now I can stop at that intersection. And I'm gonna come back to this piece and sew this way now. And it's important to try to stay on the line because that's how you're going to have an accurate square that you don't have to trim down like I did with the Kimber Bell method. And you know, I don't mean to pick on it by calling it the Kimber Bell method. I just call it that so we can differentiate from what the suggested traditional half square triangle making method is versus this one that's a little bit easier. All right, all the stitching is complete. I can cut. And now we're gonna go to the cutting board and we're gonna trim on the solid lines. All right, so I've switched to a little bit larger ruler. This one's a 12 and a half inch um, creative grid ruler. And the only reason is I wanna be able to make some of these cuts a little bit faster. So I am going to line this right up on that center line there because that's one of the solid lines. So I'm just gonna cut and I can put that part aside. There's also a solid line over here that I need to trim because that's gonna just get that little raw edge off of there. There we go. And now I need to cut this piece and this is gonna be scrap over here on this side. But we wanna make sure to get that right on the line. And now same thing with this one. This time that's a piece we're gonna keep. this piece and now there's a little bit of extra on this that'll be scrap so now we have this other side and we're gonna trim this little sliver off the side here so you can see with this method we actually cut a bigger piece so instead of having to cut all of those three and a half inch squares like I did off camera. I cut just a bigger piece and then I trim everything accurately. Kind of think it's a little bit easier. I, I made a quilt where I did the entire quilt out of triangles on a roll. It was really cool um, and a lot of Hallmark movie time was spent peeling the paper off of these pieces but we only have 12 of these at the end so and then see how I'm cutting right on that diagonal line? So there is our, our half square triangle pieces. And then I'll take them to the iron. And I like to press them with the paper still on. And I'll show you how I do that. And you know, some of you might be tempted 
to actually stack these and cut a whole bunch together, but that's not really going to be the most accurate way to do it. So I recommend just doing them individually. Okay, let's go to the iron. You can see this iron gets a lot of use, huh? This is the Laura Star Smart Eye. The Smart Eyes have the flat bottom on them like this, no protrusion. And sometimes quilters like these a little bit better because that little um, 3D sole plate doesn't bump the little skinny seams. I have a Smart U at home. That's the black one that you might see in some of the videos. It just depends. And I'm not really steaming these right now because I don't like the paper to get wilted. But you're just going to press all of these. And we aren't going to trim. The only thing we'll need to trim potentially are the little dog ears there on the ends but we just will rip the paper. And now one more thing. We're gonna make two complete pinwheels and then we're gonna have one pinwheel where we do not sew the two halves together because it gets sewn together ultimately, but it's half in section two and half in section one. So you're gonna not, you're gonna take one triangle bit aside and not sew it together. So now I'm going to chain, I'm going to rip the paper off and then I'm going to chain piece these and well, you'll see what happens. So after you rip and rip and rip, you're going to have your nice little half square triangles. And so we're going to put these into the configuration of a pinwheel. And so there's like a pinwheel and then there's one. You can refer to the pattern book for you know how you need to lay them out but there's our little pinwheel so i'm going to start by just putting all of our pinwheel pieces together so i need to pay attention that i have red in the upper right corner when it's on the bottom and teal in the upper right corner when this bit is on top and if you have ever seen any of my other piecing videos i talk about snuggle budding and so i'm just letting those little seams in here kind of lay together nice and flat so that it'll hold the shape and I can stitch it nicely. So now I'm going to get this under the foot. I'm going to lower the presser foot and I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch and I'm going to do chain piecing. So that means that I'm not going to stop between sections. So I'm going to have, if I'm making three pinwheels, I'm going to have six little sets here. Remember what I said? I want to have the teal in the upper corner and the red on the bottom just so everything is consistent and I don't get a backwards pinwheel because that has happened to me in the past and then I get angry because I have to rip out the stitches. Okay, so now that I've gotten my pieces sewn together, you can see I pressed my seams open like that. I've reserved two pieces that are gonna go with section one and section two that aren't gonna be stitched together. But the other two, but the other two pinwheels, I like to take my pin, just like this, and I go through the intersection of right where that guy, see it there? Right at the tippy, tippy tip. And then I go across the street and I stab this guy right at the tippy tippy tip. And then I hold the needle straight and then I kind of let everything just kind of be a thing together. And that's going to hold my little pinwheel center in place. So I'm going to have a perfect pinwheel once I piece this together. So now using a quarter of an inch again, I'm going to lower my presser foot and we're gonna stitch this together. I can take my stabbing pin out and put that away right now. And now we're just gonna stitch. And 
and we want to remove that pin within a hair of stitching on it. We don't want to stitch on pins, that's bad. So now I'm going to do the same thing with the next piece. So you can see here, I'm going to stab this guy right there at the intersection. And then I'm going to put this guy right in there. And so now they're going to line up together. Make sure that you know everything's perfect and I have to tell you I think on this one I might have not sewn it together quite right when I sewed the two together but we're gonna leave that just like that oops we're gonna put this pin in here just like so and then just for good measure you can also if you really needed to or you were really nervous you could put a pin after as well so now let's let's sew Pull that pin out. So a few stitches before we sew through that pin. There we go, get rid of it. And now we're gonna stitch and cut. All right, so now look at that. That's a nice little intersection, a perfect little pinwheel. We're gonna press the seams open on the back of this, just like we did here. I think it looks great. All right, let's press them and then our pinwheels are done. After they're pressed, you should have two pinwheels that are five and a half inches and they're gonna finish at five inches once they're in the quilt. After they're pressed, you should have two pinwheels that are five and a half inches and they're gonna finish at five inches once they're in the quilt. So you're gonna to refer to page seven of the instructions on your pattern and you can see how there are these Kimber Bell rulers that you can use to square off your stuff. They make a set that's in square and they make a set that's a rectangle. Now I like to use my creative grid ruler to square up my square pieces but there is also a ruler that is a rectangle version that I'm gonna show you how to use for our swimsuit box. So let's get our swimsuit box together. And don't forget that when you made these, some of you have been squaring up as you go, but I'm squaring all of mine up at the end. So in the instructions for all of your different blocks, there are the cutting instructions. So we are going to square our swimsuits to four and a half by eight and a half. So when you're squaring up your blocks, for the ones that are rectangular, you might enjoy using the Kimberbell stacking rulers. And when we are cutting these, now this particular one needs to be trimmed up to six and a half by eight and a half, but there's not a rectangular ruler that is that size. So we're gonna stack them. So I start by just centering my little swimsuit right here in the frame. I'm not even really measuring anything. I'm just literally stacking it right in there. So now I'm gonna take my rotary cutter and I'm gonna hold everything firmly and I'm gonna cut this way and then I'm gonna cut this way. Then I'm gonna take the middle frame out and cut horizontally and that will be the right size because the way that this is working is these little Kimberbell rulers are meant to stack. And so there is a eight and a half by 10, which is the larger one. That's what you see here. Then this one is the six by eight, and this one is the four by six. So four by six is the finished side after it's sewn together, and four and a half by six and a half is the pre-cut, or I'm sorry, the size with the raw edges and everything. So I've lined up the six and a half by eight and a half and the four and a half by six and a half. So now I'm gonna make my cuts. And now I'm gonna gently remove this top frame and make my horizontal cuts.
ta-da. And you might need a little pair of scissors just to trim a little bit there where the ruler didn't fit, but that's how we're gonna square those up. And they give you some other rulers. There, this one's easy. This is a two and a half by four and a half inch ruler. This is great for flying geese. And it's also great for some of those little small uh, filler blocks. And then there's like a little ruler like this. I'm just gonna use that one. Line it up totally straight, make my little cut, ta-da. Just finishing off these long edges here. Go. All right, so now swimsuits ready. When you have a block that's four and a half by six and a half, like the flip flops, all you have to do is just simply use the four and a half by six and a half inch ruler. And don't forget that all of the final trimming instructions are coordinating with the um, different embroidery design in the pattern book. So I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut. And now I can just discard, trim up my little edges here. <laughs> Might be time for a new rotary cutter blade. So then there's our flip flop. Okay, so maybe you're a fan of creative grid rulers and if that's the case then you're gonna love their creative grid it's a square it up and fussy cutting ruler now they make these in different sizes there's a uh five and a half inch option this one is the 12 is the 14 and a half inch option and honestly i like this 14 and a half inch option because i can do all sizes of the blocks with this one i can go from one inch all the way up to 14 and a half and using this one it really is going to allow me to center my umbrella right in the middle of this ruler and I think I got something I like just like this. And these umbrella blocks are gonna measure at four and a half. So now what I wanna do, I'm just gonna slide this over just a little bit like that. Perfect. Okay, now that's in the center. So now I go to this four and a half inch mark and I just make a little mark through the hole that corresponds with this four and a half, just like this. And now I'm going to use my ruler to trim just by connecting the dots. And I can use the same ruler, it doesn't really matter. So now I'm going to go dot to dot on this and trim. Turn it around. And then I'm going to go dot to dot. There we go. And then I'm gonna go dot to dot here. And then I have my umbrella nice and trimmed. Another thing that you can do, if it made you feel more comfortable, is draw a line to connect your dots and then cut on the line. And this way, if you can't see those dots as easily when you make your cuts, we can just do it just like this. Finally, 
we're going to take that last page of last month's handout. I've also included it in your handout this month, but we're gonna take this and we, it's time. It is time to trim your blocks down and it is time to start assembling the sections. So the most important thing to remember here is you are gonna sew each section together and then you're gonna sew those sections together. So you can obviously see here that you're gonna put section one together, section two together, and then you can sew those two sections together. Then you're gonna do section three and section four, then you can sew those two together, and then finally add section five to this unit and sew the quilt together, adding your border and then and there's two borders. There's a skinny inner border and then there's an outer border. So that is gonna be your goal. So you've got a lot of work to do this month, especially if you're caught up, you definitely want to keep up with this. I told you we would have homework. So what you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to complete all of your embroidered blocks by next month. That's number one. Number two is you're gonna to need to make sure you have cut out all of your filler blocks. That's two. Then the last thing is you want to make sure <laughs> that you sew sections one, sections two, sections three, sections four, sections five, and then you sew everything together at the end. Now I showed you in the um, getting ready portion of the video, but I also want you to know that in your handout, you have the diagram for the different sections so that you can sew them out. And also the Kimber Bell pattern book does tell you the order to sew things out. So we need the main part of the quilt done. You can reserve doing the borders, this inner border and the outer border until next month, but I need you to at least have the center portion of the block of the quilt done. You can do this. It's there's no more holiday presents to make. There's none of that. You're sitting around, you're snowed in. You got this. <laughs> All right. So if you enjoyed this tutorial and you want to see others, don't forget to check out our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And there you can like, comment, and subscribe.